we do with the stock of a company like Snap-on? which makes power tools and diagnostic equipment for a host of different industries, from the auto repair space to agriculture, aviation construction, even the military. Year after year, Snap-on's been a winner. But since the beginning of 2017, I don't know. It, so far, the stock's down nearly 10%. Many of the analysts who covered tell me, oh, we got to be a little more careful. Latest leg down came last month when the company reported a quarter that was not that well received. Uh, even though Snap-on beat Wall Street's earnings estimates, the company's sales were a tad light. The company's core tool business did see some tepid sales. That's the word they use. In response, the stock lost more than 4% of its value. Single session. Since then, Snap-on's been marking time. That is until this morning when the company announced a gigantic $500 million buyback. Clearly, management believes in the business, and the company's putting its money where its mouth is. So let's, look, is the stock ready to make a comeback? Let's dig deeper with Nick Pinchuk. He's the chairman and CEO of Snap One Incorporated. Hear more about his company's prospects. Mr. Pinchuk, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Jim. Glad right. to be here. All right, Nick, from the conference call, you used the word tepid three times. You said there was a malaise. Frankly, for someone like me who's been a supporter, I was, uh, let's just say, it was, I found it uh, disconcerting. Okay. And what has changed since then that you decided to put the big buyback in? And are you feeling better about the core tools process? Well, look, I, I felt good on the call. I mean, right. I used Tepid a couple of times. But I think, obviously, there are understandable questions about the tools group. The, the sales were down right. some. But I think the questions on the performance, uh, I mean, the, the, the good things about the performance, the strengths in the performance, greatly outweigh the negatives. The, R, the CNI business, the, uh, the critical industries right. business, rolling a Snap-on brand out of the garage, 4.6% up, up 8.5% as reported, and shows an acceleration of growth over the last several quarters. But, Good news for us. But should we not be concerned? Since you, I mean, frankly, you brought it up. You were not happy with tool storage, and that's a big business. I and wasn't remember, happy with if you're it. not happy with it, then I'm not happy with yeah, it. Yeah, but I have confidence in the comeback. Okay. 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 I mean, I have confidence in our business. The tools business was down primarily because of tool storage, and that has to do with how do you get people to say, I've already got a toolbox. I can't live without that new one. And it has to do with the new product. We weren't that effective well, in the in the it, new product. Was it too we expensive? I know no, Stanley no, no. It was said just, it, Stanley it, Black & Decker, you know, was pretty bullish on this end. I don't know what the... Yeah, the, okay. The, we think the market is pretty strong. Okay. I would say the good news is the vehicle repair market is pretty strong. Okay. If you want to understand that, look at our RS&I business, our repair right. system information business. Sells into the garages up 8.3% this quarter after 78 the quarter before that, after 89 the quarter before that. And if you want a business that you feel good about, think about that business software based 40% mm -hmm. software every time we sell a diagnostic unit it ignites a plume of updates in terms of software so that's a pretty good business so you look at that so the market was pretty good but you know what i i the stock is trading with AutoZone, Advanced Auto Parts and O'Reilly why is that wrong why should it not trade with those well fundamentally we're not in that kind of fundamentally we are about auto repair okay and we're not in DIY. You have a mix of some yourself. of the parts those, business and all are those do-it-yourself, right? DIY. DIY, and we're in auto repair distinctly. And if you look at our businesses, you would say that we have tremendous strength. If you look over the period, 19.9% was the operating income margin in the quarter. Okay. The highest ever. Right up 80 basis points, and we made some acquisitions over the last year, which created a 70 basis point headwind against that 80 right. basis points. Right. So if you want to look at just earnings, you'd have to say that was a boffo quarter, the tools group. The tools group was down. We, we could say the tools group was slim in terms right. of increase, but their OI margin, 19.5%, was up 120 basis points because of the new product they sold, sold at such great margins. Now, uh, the decision to do the $500 million, you had some yes. left already. Will you be in pretty much every day to sop up some of the sellers who well, seem to be leaning on the stock? I don't think, I don't think we're going we're gonna to talk about our behavior okay. associated with that. But, but I don't you blame know, you, but I, I got to ask. You know, okay, you know. But the thing is, I think what it says is we have confidence in our business. That is what it and, says. And we believe strongly in the confidence of our business. I can tell you this. If you're talking about the tools group, they have never been physically stronger than okay. today. Our franchisees have never been stronger. They've been growing year after year after year, same store sales. But you did change the credit policy. We did, we did. Was we, that because there was too much easy credit? No, no, what happened was we always restripe. We regularly oh. restripe the credit. Okay. Most years we restripe the credit and we take a look at it and adjust it. And what we found was there were certain customers that 
to our franchisees looked good because in the in the garage itself they had great reputations, but before they might have uh, defaulted on something, okay. they weren't working out for some of our franchisees. Other portions of our franchisees saw through this and were able to decide this is a good guy or a bad guy in terms to lend to. That's how we decide our credit. We the airstrikes are called in by franchisees, so we basically restriped that and said these guys are good in any weather. These guys, maybe we need to say for this type of customer, cut back a little. Got it. I want to talk about just for a second Wisconsin. Sure. Yeah. Uh, president comes, tells you know, remember, says, listen, this is a made American company. Suddenly, Foxconn's come to Wisconsin. Right. I don't think these things would have happened if it weren't initially for what you do. Well, that's what uh, Governor Walker said. Right. And Terry, Terry Goen, the, uh, there you go, the, the, uh, the uh, chairman of Foxconn actually said that. They went to visit President Trump, and he said, I was just at a great company in Wisconsin, Snap-on. You ought to go visit them, because that's a great place. And I can tell you, Wisconsin is a great place for workforce. The power of place is important for companies. Right. And we have access to some of the best workers in the world because of the schools there. The University of Wisconsin, Marquette, you know, other schools, a great, the old this community college system in the, in the in the country. So our people there are strong and capable, and uh, Foxconn saw that. All right, let's leave it on that note. That's Nick Pinchuk. He's the chairman and CEO of Snap on Tools, SNA. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.